Now let's analyze the situation and use the concept of internal energy. So where were we? We were going to think about the work done by the frictional force. Work by friction. So that would just be work. Well, it's just always F dot uh, R, or F dot displacement. So in this case, we'll call it the force due to friction dotted with, we'll call it D. Because right, D is just this displacement vector as we go from the initial to the final position. And in YouTube mode, I went so wild, I forgot to label the friction force. There it is. This was the component of gravity that way. But there's also a friction force pulling it back. So if we want to put it on here, we can draw it like that. So let's see. We know the magnitude of the friction force is mu, ooh, is mu k, the kinetic friction, um, mg cosine theta. And we know the magnitude of the d vector is d, a little d. And the angle between them is 180 degrees. Right? So it's a dot product, magnitude, magnitude, angle between. Cosine of 180 degrees. So really, it's just bringing in the negative 1. We know that the work is negative minus mu k m g d cosine theta is the work that we care about. So now to use this um, in a problem, there's sort of two ways to look at it. So one way, we'll call this view one. View one is that uh, the frictional force, F frict, or what do I call it, FF, FF, is an external force. So it's not part of the system. An external force applied by the ramp. Uh, by the ramp. So in this view, the system is just the block. All right. So you would just apply this idea, delta k plus delta u equals the external work. And we know in our particular problem, this is going to be negative. We just calculated it in our particular problem, not in general. Right? So if that's negative, then the total energy goes down. And that is basically what we saw. Right? So since this is negative, so energy is lost by the system, which is what we saw. We know when you do it with forces, it doesn't get as high if you include friction. So we didn't gain as much uh, gravitational potential energy. So that's one way to look at it. Another way um, is that the ramp is part of the system. Right, the ramp is part of the system, and friction, work due to friction, creates internal energy as heat. Friction creates internal energy as heat. Right. So the way you could write this is you could also have a conservation or sort of an energy equation. You could say, I'm going to conserve changes in kinetic energy plus changes in potential energy, plus changes in, we'll call it E, I, and T, internal energy. Those must be zero. And this will be the case if the system includes the ramp and the mass, because all the heat you make will remain in that system. And you can see, how do you calculate the internal energy? Well, you just do this. It's just the work done by friction. So basically, this is negative. You just bring it over here. It's going to be positive. And then all these are positive, and you're just conserving a certain amount of energy. Some of the energy went from these two going down to this one going up in terms of changes. So neither one of those is right or wrong. You can think of it uh, either way. Let's see if we can uh, get it right here. So let's run the numbers and say, let's check <coughs> using, uh, let's use the top way. So the loss of kinetic, 1 half mvi squared plus the gain in uh, potential is mgh, equals the external work, which we said is minus mu k mgd. Mg, actually, we want to put the cosine theta there and put the d there. 
All right, because we know that the D from the previous problem is H over sine theta. All right, so we'll put this here, H over sine theta. And all we got to do is solve this for H. So this term is negative, we'll bring it over here. Now we have two positive terms. This term is negative, we'll bring it over there. So all the terms are positive now, and we just want to pull an H out. H times, what's left here? Mg. Oh, every term has an M in it. Let's get rid of the Ms. What's left here? G. And what about this term that we brought over? Uh, we pulled out an H, we pulled out a G. Mu K, we pulled out an M. Mu K G cosine theta over sine theta. Mu K uh, G cosine theta over sine theta. And I just realized, of course, we could have pulled out a G as well. I meant to do that. I apologize deeply for that. I forgot to in my notes as well. Uh, the other side came over here, <coughs> and we canceled the M, so that's VI squared over 2. All right, and we can simplify further. <coughs> we're going to pull a G out of here, and then put the rest underneath, and we're going to get that H equals VI squared over 2G, and that is all going to be times what? Uh, we're going to put a sine theta up here and multiply the bottom times the sine theta. And we pulled out the g. So that's all going to be sine theta plus mu k, and then it'll cancel that sine theta, cosine theta. And I sort of worked it into that form because that matches what we had calculating it by forces. So of course, as we should, we get the same answer whether we do it with energy or we do it with force. So in whatever physics class you may be taking or whatever book you may be reading, you'll find this is sort of handled sometimes in weird different ways, this idea of heat and internal energy. One way to think of it is heat is the random thermal motion at the sort of atomic and molecular scale. So you could say it's still kind of like kinetic energy. So sometimes people distinguish between coherent motion, the mass, all its atoms and molecules moving together forward, and incoherent motion. We generate heat and it's still the atoms moving, they're just not moving together, incoherent motion. So really just converting some of our kinetic to incoherent kinetic um, is one way to think of it. But uh, you can also do little mechanisms for how friction works. When two things rub against each other, you get a little pull between little, little disparities stick together and they pull on each other. And in that way, you can imagine little pieces of the ramp are moving and you can think of the work done on the ramp but really, the way we describe it, the ramp never moves. So we have no work done on the ramp. So all these different models and ways to think about friction all end up working like basically one of these two. So I just went with those two basic ways to describe it. <coughs>